Well, ISIS, it's a three parts. Part one is you have Syria. And in Syria, you had a, all three parts have to do with Sunnism and Shiism. These two groups, these two sects of the Islamic faith are not going to get along. They haven't gotten along for 1500 years. They don't need, like each other. They're never going to like each other. So you have in Syria, you have the, the Shias that are in charge of the government who have teamed up with the Christians and have for, for 1500 years. So they're, they're friends. And what then happens is you have the Sunnis that have been treated as third class citizens under the Shia dominated government. So they started this Arab revolution a few years ago, and the, but nobody funded them. So the Syrian government and the Christians are able to, to squash them, but they needed more assistance. Part two is you have Al-Qaeda. With the death of Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda completely falls apart. Think about a vase. Al-Qaeda under bin Laden was a solid vase. Without him, it falls and splinters apart into a thousand little pieces. Well, those thousand little pieces went to Syria to join the the moderate Sunnis, so then that is the formation of ISIS in Syria, or ISIL in Syria. ISIS is in Iraq. They're going to merge into one group. In Iraq, what happens is you had a Sunni had been in charge of Iraq for 1500 years. Saddam Hussein, the English, the Iraq Revolution put Saddam Hussein, a Sunni in power, and what you have there is the Sunnis have always been in power, so we invade, we create a majoritarian democracy where majority rules, and in Iraq the majority are Shia. So the Shia were put in power, they then started passing legislation, like all majoritarian democracies do, that repress the minority. Majoritarian democracies are the worst type of democracies, especially if there is an ethnic or religious minority. So the Shias then started to pass all this legislation to repress the Sunnis. They kicked them out of the military, they kicked them out of educa education, they kicked them out of law, they had no jobs. They were angry, they were frustrated, and then this group of fundamentalists started to make way. And then they jumped on the ISIS bandwagon, which is why ISIS has gotten so popular in, in Iraq, is because the Sunnis are tired of the repression, they want their power back, so they've joined with ISIS. And so you have ISIL, you have ISIS, and Al-Qaeda have, think of them as all merging into one group, which is now ISIS. What makes this group different than Al-Qaeda and the Taliban is neither had oil, neither had a population that backed them, neither had endless amounts of money, uh, and neither had advanced American weaponry. ISIS has all of this. It has endless amounts of oil, with the number one country buying the oil is China. It has endless amounts of wealth. It has all of the American, advanced American weaponry that we left in Iraq. It's much better off than Al-Qaeda and the Taliban combined times 100. It still doesn't equal the, what ISIS now has. And think of all the destruction that Al-Qaeda has done over the last since September 11th to the United States. And that's just the tip of the iceberg in what ISIS is capable of. They want to go back 1500 years. Their objective is to have a Sunni Islamic state and uh, throughout the Islamic world. 1500 years ago, Muhammad started his campaign to go across what is now the Islamic world and take the pagan land away from the pagans and, and make it Islamic land, leaving the Christians and the Jews alone for the most part. But as he went across the Middle East, creating this, what is, his objective was to create an Islamic state and it was working, but then he died and the Islamic state fell apart. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to go back 1500 years and create this one unified Sunni Islamic state. That's their only objective. ISIS is the greatest threat to the United States since Nazism. And I'm not even talking to Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. It's much greater than those. This is equal to the threat that Nazism was, was toward us in World War II. And it's the greatest threat since Nazism. And because of its popularity, because of its support, because of its ability to have all this money and advanced American weaponry. Because with money comes weapons. And with money, you can buy scientists. And if you can buy scientists, then you can create weapons. You can create weapons that can reach the United States, at least reach our, our ports, 
our military bases within the Middle East. This is the greatest threat that we've had since Nazism. We have three ways to do this. One is we can put another dictator in, just like Saddam Hussein, and let him clean house. Um, but then what was our, why did we lose so many Americans? That would be our question, is, is, is thousands of Americans lost their lives for what? To replace one dictator, to put another dictator in. Second one would be, we need to work with the Iranians. The, the ISIS wants the absolute destruction of Iran and the elimination of Shias just like the absolute destruction of us. So therefore, we need to team up with the Iranians and work with the Iranians and to defeat this. We have to work with the Kurds. The Kurds and the Iranians will work together and then we can, we can get rid of this, this threat, but we must work through the Kurds and we must work through the Kurds with the Iranians. And then once this is done, we have to stop trying to create states like we think of a state. We have to create Syria as two states, and Iraq is three states, a Kurdish state, a Sunni state, and a Shia state. Syria, a Shia state, a Sunni, a Shia Christian state, and a Sunni state. If we can break the states up like that, then we'll see success. In Yugoslavia, under Bill Clinton, we created multiple states. And all of these multiple states have flourished and in the last few years have worked very well. They don't necessarily have diplomatic relations with each other, but they have diplomatic relations with the global community. And that's what uh, that's what we would have in the Middle East. We would have the Shias teaming up with the Iranians, we have the Sunnis teaming up with Saudi Arabia, but we would have relative peace, much better, much more so than it is right now. 